December the 12th, 1936, is another of the dates that will go down in British history, for it sees first the members of the Accession Council meeting at St. James's Palace to take the oath of allegiance to the new sovereign, and then, with the grey mist creeping up from the river, the Royal Proclamation. Out onto the ivy-clad and scarlet-draped main balcony, in their resplendent uniforms, come the hereditary Earl Marshal of England, His Grace the Duke of Norfolk, the Garter King of Arms, who will read the proclamation, the Noroi King of Arms, the Clarence King of Arms, the Perseverance and the Heralds, and dim lights flash on silver trumpets. of abdication dated the 10th day of December instant his former majesty King Edward VIII did declare his irrevocable determination to renounce the throne for himself and his descendants and the said instrument of abdication has now taken effect whereby the imperial crown of Great Britain, Ireland, and all other his former majesty's dominions is now solely and rightfully come to the high and mighty Prince Albert Frederick Arthur George with the Lord Mayor, Aldermen, and citizens of London do now hereby, with one voice and consent of tongue and heart, publish and proclaim that the high and mighty Prince Albert Frederick Arthur George is now become our only lawful and rightful liege lord, George the Sixth, by the grace of God, of Great Britain, Ireland, and the British dominions beyond the seas, King. God save the King. Night has almost fallen as the procession moves off for the further readings of the proclamation at Charing Cross and in the city. And in the final darkness of the first day of a new reign, London echoes to the royal salute of the guns. 